me ask you guys a question. What's one thing that you have to remember to do before you go to bed? What do you have to do? Brush your teeth? Pajamas, right? Anything else? You read stories. Yes, when you're a kid, you read stories. Don't worry. Sometimes when you're an adult, you read stories too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what about this one? What do you have to do or what's one thing you have to remember to do before you eat dinner? Um, get ready um, and wear your best. Get, you have to get ready. That's right. What else? Uh, wash your hands. Wash your hands. You have to pray. Absolutely. Fantastic. What about if you're getting ready to go to school or to daycare, what do you have to remember to do? What do you have to remember to do? Put your clothes on. Put your clothes on. That's pretty important. <laughs> yes. Get your homework done. Your homework has to be done. What else? Uh, yeah. have you have to have your backpack ready to go. Absolutely. These are all important things that we have to remember to do. Today, Jesus is going to talk to a man who has a lot of money, and he has a lot of stuff. And he's going to tell him to do some things with all of that money and all that stuff, and he's kind of sad that he has to do it. But Jesus says, you're forgetting one thing. The one thing that I want you to try to do is this. Follow me. Do you think we could try to remember that maybe today? After all the other things that we have to think about before we go to bed or before we eat or before we go to school, is that the one thing that we should probably think of the most is to follow Jesus. Yeah, well, after we get dressed, yes. We follow Jesus, yes. Yes. Let's pray. Thank you, gracious God, for being with us everywhere we go, with everyone we meet. Help us to follow you so we may be more like you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So today's gospel lesson picks up right where we left off last week. And you may remember that we talked about divorce last week. And you can go listen to that sermon on our webpage or on YouTube. But just to kind of give you a quick synopsis that the Pharisees are um, challenging Jesus about divorce. And he points back to the creation story about how we were made to be in, in uh, mutual you know, longing for each other and, uh, and taking care of each other because we were created to be good um, and that even that the, the creation of the woman was to rescue this man from being, from being alone, that we were created to be in community, and nobody can separate those things, and that Moses gave this decree of divorce because of hardness of heart. The hardness of heart of the Israelites, which reminds us of the hardness of heart of Pharaoh, the selfishness that, that he had, the selfishness of the Israelites, breaking commandments, and uh, so this divorce decree was given to them for that. And Jesus is reminding the Pharisees of of their own hardness of heart. And then, kid, then kids are coming to Jesus, and they're bringing children to him, and he picks one up, and he's blessing this child, and he says, this is the kingdom of God. This is how you enter the kingdom of God as a child. This is it right here. And we talked a little bit about that last week. So I, this whole week's been going on. I've been thinking about that concept of the child. Um, and uh, have you ever seen like a three-year-old with their parent and the parent, like, stubs their toe or gets hurt or something or maybe falls down. What does the little three-year-old do when that happens? They kind of come over and they're like going, oh, are you okay, mommy? Are you okay? And they come over and they pat and they love one, right? Have you ever seen them on a playground before and two little kids are out there playing and one falls down? The other one will bend down really close. Are you okay? They're going to check on each other, right? Have you ever seen like kids that, like, when they're having a meal together, little ones are sharing a meal together and one of them doesn't have something to drink? The other, one of them will just hand them their milk. Here you go. Not because they want to be best friends or they want to receive something from them, but because they're thirsty. There's this certain sense of vulnerability that children have where they're willing to absolutely empathetically and compassionately check on someone or take care of the needs of another one, even a parent. But that's the kingdom of God, Jesus says. And somewhere along the way, we lose that as adults, don't we? Because if we see somebody that's hurt, we're like, good luck, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> somebody that's thirsty, we're like, yeah, but I just bought my milk. I don't know. I don't know. In the gospel today, Jesus is confronted by a rich young man who comes up to him and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I got to tell you, every time I read this scripture, I imagine this rich young man like a used car salesman. 
okay? And like, he's in the back of the dealership, and he sees Jesus come onto the lot, and he's like, oh, I'm going to get this one, guys. Watch this, you know? And he puts, tightens his tie, tucks in his shirt, and he runs out, and he's like, hey, good teacher, what do I got to do to make sure that I inherit eternal life? You just tell me what old Gil needs to do to make sure that I'm going to get eternal life. Is there any paperwork I need to fill out for you? Is what kind of deal do we need to make? Is there some place I need to go? You let me know what T's need to be crossed, what I's need to be dotted, because I deserve that eternal life. And Jesus looks at him and he says, why do you call me good? And he points to God. Immediately, only God is good. Have you, do you know the commandments? And he returns back to these commandments that we just talked about with the Pharisees, how they were breaking all these commandments and why this hardness of heart was given for all these things. And he says, do you know the commandments? Honor thy father and mother, don't murder, don't steal, you know, all the, all the things. And old Gil is like, going, oh, yeah, I've kept him since my kid. Oh, I've been a child, man. I never broke his commandment. I've been the best non-commandment breaker ever, ever. You're not going to find a better person that's never broken a commandment. That's me. And Jesus doesn't condemn this guy, but looks on him with compassion. It says he loved him, which is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, in his humanness, in his arrogance. And he says, you lack one thing. And this is where we tend to get hung up. We lack one thing. There's a semicolon there, by the way. He says, go sell all your stuff, give the money to the poor, and then you're going to have plenty of treasures. And then the next semicolon happens, and it says, then come follow me. And he gets stuck up on what happens between those semicolons because he's a lot of possessions, and he's shocked, and he's grieved, and he walks away sad. And he, Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, it's really hard for someone with wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. Notice, he doesn't talk about eternal life. He says the kingdom of God. And Jesus is constantly inviting us to usher in the kingdom of God right here, today, right now. It's available right now. It's not some future thing. It's available right now, even in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. Where? On earth. That's now. As it is in heaven, he's saying it's hard for a wealthy person to enter into that kingdom, especially if all they're doing is holding on to that wealth because they think it is theirs. Which, by the way, this car salesman, gentleman, rich young man that's doing this, it's almost like he's bartering with God. What do I have to do to inherit? And, and that word inherit is a beautiful word because what does that mean? That it's something that's going to be yours when the time comes. When somebody dies, it's all yours. What do I have to do to make sure that happens? I want to make sure that all of my ducks are in a row. Please let me know that I will be assured of eternal life so I can go off and enjoy my wealth. His focus is on that, that financial thing. His focus is on that possession thing. His focus is not on the following of Jesus, not pointing toward God. And the disciples are also in the same spot. That they missed it as well. And they said, then who can be saved? I mean, oh, we all have stuff. Who can be saved? And Jesus points out again, with mortals, it's impossible. But it's not impossible with God. And he points right back to God. And he's trying to get them to see it's God. And you would think at this point in time, the disciples are like, oh, we get it now, Jesus. This is great. We're going to focus on God for the rest of our lives and not on our stuff. And then the credits roll and you hear the music and it's all over. But no, Peter immediately goes, but Jesus, but Jesus, we left everything and we followed you. Almost as if like, look what we did. Isn't that not enough? And Jesus points out, we've all left moms and dads and brothers and sisters and things and fields and donkeys and stuff. We've all left all those things. And we're going to receive those a hundredfold, not only today in this kingdom of God, but even in the hereafter. But you're forgetting, you're setting your things on things that are human. That's not how God works. It's opposite of that. The first or last, the last are first when we're thinking on God. We have to be vulnerable like that child. Willing to check on the other person just because they're hurt. Not because it's going to do something for me. These lessons, the past two weeks, have been used so many times to cause harm. And, and, and in my opinion, in my theology, they've been misinterpreted to make people feel really bad about who they are. 
and, and, and get stuck in marriages that, that, are, that have caused harm um, and, and, and abuse. And, and, it's, and it's really, really difficult because people don't want to get a divorce because they think then they're committing adultery and they're sinning and that they're not going to receive eternal life or they're not going to be a part of the kingdom of God. And that is not what Scripture is telling us. If that's the focus, then we think that we have the ability to save ourselves. We don't. We're mortal. God makes that possible. Today's lesson, we get stuck on the parts in between the semicolons all the time, and people have left church, they've left religion in the dust because they think all they're after is my money. I hear sermons about, you know, like, sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. And that's not what we're asking you to do today. We're a wealthy nation. I've seen the cars in the parking lot, man. Y'all got some money, right? <laughs> but I'm not asking you to go outside and hand your keys to the next person that's poor or to give your keys to your house or to sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. But what the scripture's telling me is that all of that stuff is in the way of my relationship with God then I'm not following Jesus, I'm following my stuff wherever it leads me. And then all of my decisions are based off of my stuff and not on God. Over and over and over again in Scripture, Jesus tells us, if that's causing you to stumble, remove it, cut it off, get rid of it, focus on God. Follow me. The hard part is what we have to do in that sense to follow Jesus, to remember that one thing, is that we're invited in those spaces to become vulnerable like that little child that's going to check on someone just because, not to receive. And it doesn't matter what that kid owns or has in their possession. They're just checking on that welfare. We have it in us to do that. So maybe today we can practice that just a little bit. And instead of thinking, I need to go out and sell everything I have and remove every subscription I have from online to, to give the money to other people, maybe we can ask God to bless what we have been blessed with, our wealth so that it might be used to bless others. Maybe we can ask God to bless the possessions that we have, the homes, the cars, the, the, all the fancy things that we may possess, and ask God to use those to bless others. Maybe we can ask God to bless our jobs, our vocations, our neighborhoods, so that way we might bless others with those things as well, so that we can be vulnerable and practice following Jesus. It's a difficult thing to do because we are like the disciples and we're like that rich young man and we're like the Pharisees and we tend to hold on to the things that are ours because that's what our world teaches us. But Jesus is asking us to let go and embrace the kingdom of God. It's here. It's now. And we enter it as a little child. Are you okay? Amen.